Hello friends, I am back. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I actually posted a job searching video for the first time last week, and that was kind of the initial stages of me looking for a job. So now I'm in my second week and I have a few updates, which is exciting because last time, if you haven't seen the video, I got rejected by quite a few companies, including a company that I actually used to work at as a software engineer. Um, so right now I actually have a interview scheduled for um, around mid-May and I actually got a call back from Target, my alma mater, for next week. So I'm going to talk to a recruiter next week about that and I'm super excited. So in this video, I'm actually going to just go through my whole process of studying for these companies because I am actively applying for both big tech companies and then also like large to mid-sized companies and, and maybe a few small ones as well. Um, but I guess the goal of this video is to just show you my whole process because of course the interview process will be a lot different between the two types of companies. And so my study plan also has to be catered accordingly. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to get into it and kind of show you what I'm doing to study. I'm currently a software engineer at Microsoft and I have about seven years of experience in the industry. So uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm looking basically for a senior role right now. Um, so I'm not going for a junior role, which I know is the hardest to get right now, but yeah. It, so first I'm just going to show you for the big tech company that I'm going to be interviewing for in about a month, I am obviously going to be looking at a ton of leak code questions. So if you go onto leak code, there's actually a section where you can go just like click on specific companies to study for. And thankfully, because this is a big tech company, they have a list of questions that have been asked recently in the last 30 days. Thankfully, I also have some friends that have recently gotten into this big tech company. I actually have like three friends that have just gotten into it. Um, and so they're also helping me by giving me some study materials and just, you know, um, kind of prepping me by doing mock interviews with me as well. So I can maybe even film the mock interview process when I when I get to that. Um, yeah, so I think it's going to be a grind. Um, like I have a full time job right now. Uh, so it's along with like doing YouTube. It's going to be kind of hard to also study for one to two hours a day. Uh, but that's kind of the time that I've given myself to do this. If I want to do about a hundred questions within a month. Um, I need to do a little, like around three questions a day, basically. Uh, and that's gonna be tough. Like I'll probably end up doing more like medium questions, three medium questions a day. But yeah, we're gonna see how this is gonna go. Oh, also the other thing is uh, in terms of how I study. So I usually don't just like, grind through leak code problems because for example if you haven't seen a specific problem before um, or you're not able to just figure it out on the spot it, it might take you over an hour to get a medium problem and these companies are expecting you to do like one to two problems within one interview uh, one interview is 45 minutes by the way so it's kind of unrealistic to expect that you're going to get a lot of progress by just like you know, slamming hard on the leak code grind and, and just doing as many problems as possible. I think the best thing to do is spend about 30 to 40 minutes on one problem in the beginning. And if you're still unable to get it, look up the solution, like watch a video tutorial on YouTube. I've actually been watching a bunch of Neat Codes video tutorials. Um, his videos are amazing. They're really, really descriptive and it's really easy to follow along. And so what he does is he actually, in the beginning of the video shows how to actually solve it theoretically. So he'll draw diagrams and kind of show you how to think through the problem. And then the second half is actually coding everything. So what I would recommend is if you're stuck on a problem, I would watch the first part where you understand theoretically how to solve the problem and then try to code it on your own before watching his solution. And I think again, in the beginning, it'll be more so like understanding conceptual parts of the problem and then getting into the coding aspect versus later on, I think, like if you're still struggling, you should just look at the solutions at that point and try to learn how to code it and then just like keep doing leak code problems. Maybe this isn't the best way to do it, but I think in terms of like timeline, uh, the beginning is more for understanding theory, conceptual aspect, getting comfortable with the coding part. The second half of my studying, which is like the last two weeks, I want to be like cranking out these leak code problems fast. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, they've also given me a platform to practice on because they told me like what the interview will be on like platform wise 
And so I want to also code out my solutions there. So I get used to coding in that, um, you know, like in an environment where I can't debug, it doesn't compile, you know, things like that. I have to get used to, for example, uh, finding my own bugs, creating my own test cases. And that's also something that I think people tend to neglect when they're leak coding on leak code. Uh, it's a different setup, right? When you get into the interview, if you're unfamiliar with the setup, that might throw you off. And so it'll feel different. So yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm doing leak code wise. Um, 100 questions as a recap, 100 questions. Uh, first half is a lot of theory, conceptual uh, stuff that I'm doing, but also I'm coding as well, but I'm focusing on understanding the problem solving aspect. Second half of my study plan, which is the last two weeks, is just grinding as many problems as possible. Uh, even spending like two to three hours a day doing this, which I know is a crazy time commitment. But I mean, I think that's what it'll take to get into this company, unfortunately. So that's my plan for big tech. Um, the other thing is, this is just the first round interview, by the way. So afterwards, if I pass that first round interview, I'll have to also go through four rounds, like an entire interview loop, where I'll be doing two interviews that are coding based, one that's behavioral, and then one that's system design. And so I mentioned this in my previous video, but I'm going to start using Hello Interview for the system design aspect. I think I've heard amazing reviews about that where they have like really in-depth problems for you to solve uh for system design and then also i think they have some online mock interviews for that as well which i think will be really helpful because i get pretty nervous about system design it's usually my weaker subject so yeah i think i really should study up on that too uh, but that will be kind of the latter half if i pass the first round interview um the next thing i wanted to talk about was the other company that I'm interviewing for, which is a Forbes 500 company, so it's not like a big tech company. Their interview process is gonna look different. It's for a senior engineer versus like this big tech company. It's also technically for like more of a senior role, but again, requirements are, are vastly different. Um, with this company that I've interviewed at before, actually, I think five years ago, um, they more so focus on your experience of course, your coding ability, but you're not going to be asked how to traverse like a tree or you're not you're probably not going to have to know like binary search and things like that um, or recursion. But the good thing is I will hopefully be prepped on that studying for this big tech company. So that's my plan to just have the solid coding fundamentals down by the time I interview for this other company, um, because if I can blow them out of the water with that then I hope that the rest of it will go smoothly as well. Um, so it'll definitely have like coding aspects, but then they'll also focus a lot on the behavioral and the experience, your leadership skills, project management, um, and project development. I think for a senior, that's really important, being able to lead junior engineers and also like delegating tasks, breaking down projects into like smaller features and into user stories and things like that. It's very process oriented at these larger like Forbes 500 companies versus at big tech. Of course, parts of it are process oriented, but a lot of it is about adapting and about ambiguity. Like you're given a problem that you just don't know how to solve or maybe anyone knows how to solve in the moment for that matter. And they're like, all right, figure it out. And that's pretty much it. Like they don't give you any context. They don't give you any details. Like you might not even know what they're talking about in terms of like what system you're supposed to troubleshoot in. And so you have to figure it out and you take initiative. You are the leader of that project and you just figure it out whatever, however you can. And that's the part that I actually loved about working at Microsoft. Um, well, it was a love hate relationship. I think I hated it at first because I wasn't used to it, but adapting to change because technology changes so fast. They're at the forefront of technology. And so you may have a specific deadline and then that will suddenly change and your priorities will change within like a month and you have to quickly adapt and Kind of pivot so that took some getting used to and then also um the ambiguity aspect right like their problems aren't always hashed out in super detailed because they're dealing with a lot of problems very quickly and so you, it's kind of up to you to be like the pm the documentation person the troubleshooter the tester the person that does the analysis on the system and the software engineer and the infra engineer you know you're doing devops like it, it's just a lot 
but it's fun. It's like the chaos is, is fun. Um, so yeah, th those are kind of the disparate aspects that they're looking for. And so I have to study accordingly and present myself accordingly for those two different situations. Sorry guys, I feel like I went on this crazy rant. But uh, anyways, so for this larger company that's not necessarily big tech, the way that I'm planning on studying is to overlap the lead code aspect, but then focus really hard on behavioral examples um, what are times that I had a conflict with either my manager or like with another team member? How did I resolve that conflict? And then how did I lead a project to completion? If there were issues that came up or blockers that maybe moved the deadline, how did I deal with that? How do I, how did I adapt to that change? Again, very behavioral and experience focused. So I'm going to also study up on specific job requirements for that role. Um, I have a lot of the job requirements already, but it's good to just like have the information fresh in your mind anyways, so you're prepared for the interview. So yeah, I think I'm, I'm gonna do that. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited for both interviews. I'm just nervous because it's been so long since I've like been in the interview hunt. It's been almost four years. So I think it'll be really interesting to see how rusty my skills are, especially given the fact that Back when I was interviewing, the market was a lot different and my role was also a lot lower. It was more like mid-level engineer and now I'm, I'm shooting a little bit higher. So I'm curious to see how these interviews go um, and I'm hoping to get a lot more interviews. I don't want like everything to ride on just these two, especially since they'll be my first two interviews. I want to still keep applying and keep interviewing and get as many interviews as possible because last time that's what it took to even get one job, like multiple interviews over and over and over again to the point where I was like on autopilot with the interviewing. So that's kind of my goal. Uh, I hope you guys liked my rant. Sorry, this is kind of long winded. I was planning on showing you more about like how I was studying, which I'm going to link a bunch of resources that I'm using as well, but I think I also just want to make it clear that it studying isn't just like a one size fits all for each company. I think that's the mistake that a lot of people make. I think you have to cater the process for each company as well. Uh, even sometimes your resume, you have to cater for that company or for that specific role. So uh, the studying obviously will look a lot different because the requirements are just different. And I want people to realize that for junior engineers, it's, it's less apparent, but as you get higher up, it's uh the skills that they're looking for can be different that's that's basically all i want to say but yeah uh comment down below if you want to see more of these types of videos i really have enjoyed documenting my process and i'm going to get into the details more next time with we'll see if i'm going to mention names but uh well, i'll at least talk about like specifically the process like how many leak code problems i've done which ones i've done uh like how far along i am with my behavioral uh, interview preparation. Like I'll have a, a document with like all of the details on there. So yeah, I'm excited to show you guys that. And I hope you guys are, are doing well on your interview journey. I know it's rough out there. I'm in the thick of it right now too. So all right. Well, I'll talk to you guys next time.